You actually don't have to kill the animal, no. You, you um, again, from a very small sample, you can grow 10,000 kilos of beef, whereas the animal only has 100 kilos. Mm. So, and you can take several samples from that cow, and the cow can still live on. Cultivated meat is meat as we know it, um, just grown outside of a cow. It uses stem cells from cows, and we let them grow and let them produce the tissue. Uh, and we don't need the cow for that. We can do that outside of the cow. And in doing so, we can do it uh, in a ethically um, superior way and also in a more environmentally friendly way. Well, the idea is actually pretty old. Winston Churchill in 1932 already alludes to this possibility at some point, but the technology wasn't there yet. And um, in the Netherlands, a 92-year-old guy uh, was obsessed by this idea for most of his life, and he started in the Netherlands uh, with a group of scientists um, in 2004, sort of the first really government-subsidized program in developing this. I think it will, in real life, be produced by um, intermediate-scale um, factories, if you like, um, uh, companies uh, that, in 25,000 liter bioreactors, fermenters, will produce the cells and will, in parallel, let the cells produce their tissue. Um, that's, that's what is going to happen. Basically, what we're right, doing right now in the lab, but then at a much larger scale. You could do this at home, um, but you know I, I don't think that's a realistic proposition because mm -hmm. most people will find it too complex to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we made several burgers, yes, <laughs> and it's you know it's uh, it's meat. It's it's recognizable as meat. The structure is the same. The sort of the, the texture is the same, which is important. The uh, the taste is not quite as good yet. And it, it was, in the beginning, very expensive, and it's still quite expensive. But um, So we need to improve it. We need to add fat tissue to it, and that's exactly what we're doing right mm. now. Right. No, you cannot really feel how it, it reacts in your body. Um, and obviously, you know, people are wondering, is, if this, is, is this really the same, or is this slightly different, and, and will it be safe, and how will we react to it? Um, you know, in essence, it's the same tissue, so I don't see any reasons why our body would have a different sort of reaction to it. Um, you know, the only thing I can say with the limited amount that I ate, it, as far as I can tell, digested normally. I didn't have any sort of uh, heartburn um, at night or anything like that. <laughs> The thing is, from very, very few stem cells, from a sample of, let's say, one gram, you can make up to 10,000 kilos of beef. So you can multiply tremendously so that you need much fewer cows to feed the entire planet. We are just continuing the work. We are improving that product. We are uh, looking at the technology to scale it up to that 25,000 liter bioreactor. Um, and we are, obviously, not all of this can be done within the walls of the university, so we are setting up a company to do the scaling, uh, which is probably going to start uh, in a month or so. And, um, and then we have to get regulatory approval, which will take a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's our path towards um, commercialization. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we could stress as consumers that um, all those issues that we talked about, whether it's environment, uh, but, but maybe in particular animal welfare, is really a concern for us uh, and will uh, become a bigger concern over time. I think that's probably the best um, way to get consumers, that, that angle, that animal welfare angle is probably the best way to get consumers to eventually choose for a product like this over a livestock produced piece of beef. A, a way to coerce consumers to consume less and, and really consume sort of 
in, in a rational way um, with with all the with all the uh, ramifications on environment on um, sustainability uh, but but really to consume less to be much more rational about con consumption than that we currently are at large. Mm -hmm. I, I think mostly about food, but there are many, many other um, aspects of life where this holds true. Mm -hmm. we, we don't need stuff. We, don't, we accumulate stuff and we typically don't need it. And you realize that you, you, you don't need them once you throw them all out. Um, and I think the coming generation is probably more aware of that um, because they probably also are more constrained than we are, but I, I think that's um, if I think it's dreaming. But that's what you asked me to do—to dream, um, and I, I, you know, that's what I really would like to see happening. But um, I, because I think it's a dream, mm -hmm. I develop technologies to at least avert the negative mm -hmm. consequences of our of our consumerism. Mm -hmm.